Hey guys, welcome to another Heavy House tutorial. Today we're going to be working in X Particles and Cycles 4D. I apologize for the length of this video in advance. I am just doing this completely in real time and probably be editing very little. So first things first, let's just throw a sphere in the scene and bump its segments up just because I don't like seeing the facets. Okay, we're going to throw an HDRI into the scene. Come over to HDR, open HDRI, and uh, sure, we'll choose one of these. Let's go ahead and start our real-time preview. And this is what we have. It's beautiful. I'm going to turn off the visibility under CY Environment, Object tab. There we go, now we just have a black background. Um, so the first thing we're going to do, actually, we're going to pause this real-time preview. We're just going to try to get the noise uh, correct on here. So if you just double click in the material panel, drag and drop that on. This is just a standard noise. If you want this to view correctly, um, make sure under options you have noises selected. Okay. So texture, noise, and we're just really trying to create something that give, is kind of interesting. So. We really want something with a range of values, so let's try maybe this one here. Okay, so that's not enough contrast. Really, we want some areas where the particles are and the particles aren't. Uh, you'll understand this as we go along, but I'm gonna go ahead and just increase the scale. Sure, that looks good. And then let's let's make some some areas that are completely black. So we're just going to raise up the low clip and for now that will work. Okay, so let's go ahead and add in the X particles. I'm in R21, so go up to the X particles tab and we'll just create a new XP system. Under the emitter, we are going to change the object to object, drag in our sphere, over on emission, we're going to change this from rate to shot. I'm going to do something like initially like 50,000 particles, full lifespan, that's fine. Speed, we're going to set to zero. And we'll turn off our visibility on our sphere. And on the XP system, turn off the icon and viewport. And then if we hit play, you see we get all these particles emitted to all of the vertices. So we wanna change that, we want it to be over the whole area. So under XP emitter, go back to object, change this from polygon center to polygon area. Do that again, and here we go. So now uh, we wanna see, we wanna make sure we can see the size of these. Let's go over to display and just resize this. Under display, let's change it from dots to circles. And go ahead and force the display. And you can see we've got a lot, a lot of circles. That's fine for now. Under modifiers, we're going to go to control modifier. We're going to go down to XP scale. And Mode is going to stay independent. Parameter change is going to be the particle radius. Operation is we want to use a shader. Um, radius value, we can uh, take a look at this um, after we've put in our shader. So now come back to the material that we made earlier, earlier, which is this one here that we put on the sphere. Go ahead and double click on that. Go to the color right click the texture and hit copy and close that we can hide its visibility again and then back on the XP scale right click on shader and click paste so now that same noise pattern that we made is now going to be controlling the scale of the particles fully white will be the largest particle at uh, right now it's being set to one centimeter 
and black will be zero. This radius value here completely overrides whatever you put into uh, the radius of the particles in the emission. So just keep that in mind if you're getting a little confused by that, your XP emitter is completely overridden by the XP scale because we are, we are changing the particle radius. So now if we hit play or just go forward a frame clicking G, you can now see we have particles grouped up similar to what that noise looked like. So that's an interesting look. That's probably something we'll go ahead and go with. Let's make some more variation in the particle size though. So just in the XP scale, come to radius value. Let's set that to three. Again, go back to the beginning. You can hit uh, shift F, you can click here. Um, but now go forward with G. Okay, there we go. We've got a decent amount of um, scale variation. We might change the noise in a little bit uh, once we start playing with what these particles look like. Let's go ahead and before we start messing with the color, let's try to, you know, right now, these are just spawning. They're gonna stay there in the entire time. Let's maybe give it a little extra motion. So let's add in a, I don't really want them leaving the sphere. So let's choose a motion modifier. I think it's here, yes, XP follow surface. So we want it to follow the sphere. So just drag that down here. And I think these settings should work fine. Uh, if we hit play, you're not gonna see anything um, different other than they're kind of jittering around a little bit. Now we're gonna go to modifiers and just to give it some extra motion. We're gonna go to XP turbulence and um, let's bring the scale down to 50, um, the strength to two maybe, uh, who knows. And if we hit play on that, okay. So you can see here, these particles are moving around, but they are sticking to the surface. Also gonna notice though, that the scale of these particles is changing as it goes over certain areas. To make this a little easier to see, let's uh, change what this looks like. So in the XP emitter, go to display, uh, color mode, change it from single color to gradient parameter. We want to change this, I'm gonna remove these. Double click that and let's make it completely black. And instead of age being the parameter, we're gonna set this to radius. Okay. Now, if we hit play on this right now, you're gonna notice everything looks really black. And that is because by default it is set to the minimum value being zero and the maximum value being 100. Uh, our maximum value that we've set in XP scale is three centimeters. So we know that our maximum is three centimeters. So you can either assign it like this. So now anything that is three centimeters, which would be fully white on our noise is going to show up as fully white here or you can select auto and that will should look the exact same yeah it looks at the total value of ranges that you, you have in your scene the radius size in this case and then maps it according to that uh, so a lot of times auto works perfectly fine i'll just leave it on that for now okay you'll also notice here i'm going to leave the gradient mapped black to white I don't like doing my um, coloring of XP of X particles in this section. I'd rather do it in Cycles 4D. And black to white is a linear value that I can freely and easily remap in Cycles. And you, the advantage, main advantage is I don't need to go back to the beginning and play it again every single time I wanna see a preview of what those look like. If, X, if Cycles 4D is handling that, all the color, changes that I make will be uh, represented live in the real-time preview. So that's just my own personal preference, but if you're gonna be using Cycles 4D or really any other third party, I would just map, map it black to white here and you can fine tune the values in your render engine. So let's start making something look like something. 
Okay, we'll render this. This is clearly um, change our canvas size. Go to cycles 4D. Let's just do 1280 by 1280. Okay, and um, set this into 75. Let's go ahead and start seeing what these look like in cycles 4D. So we're gonna hit play and we see nothing. So we're gonna come down here and go to create cycles 4D and let's just do object material for now. We can drop this directly onto XP emitter. These particles will show up immediately and you can see here we've got all of our particles. Uh, we don't have any color to that yet. We will handle that next. So by default, if you just drop uh, a cycle of material on here, it will automatically start showing the particles, which is good, but it's also using um, the default subdivisions on these. So it might load in a little slower. Um, so if you go to tag cycle 4D tags and add in the CY instance tag, uh, you now can change your sphere segments. So you can drop this down you know, this is a bit extreme. You probably want it to look a little cleaner than this, but you know, you can drop this down. If you're doing something like particles in the background, uh, make sure you use this just so that you're not having it calculate just, I don't know what the exact number is. I think it might default to 24. Let's see if we delete that really quick. Appears to be the same. I believe it is 24. Okay, we'll put that back on. Let's drop it down to 16, uh, 12. Sure, why not? Um, okay, so go into the object material. And let's start making something. Over here, type in particle info. I'm gonna grab that. And let's take a look at a few of these. Uh, probably in more tutorials, I'll go into some more of these or using them differently. Um, but obviously the one that we know we're gonna use is color. So if we solo that color, you see here are white particles to black. That is our based off of our radius. So we can take that and pipe it directly into our base color, unsolo it, and now that is applied to the default glossy material from the principal BSDF. Uh, another one that you could also use and not even have to worry about assigning a value to is radius. Now, when you click on this, you're gonna notice that it is very, very dark compared to our color, which is here, the radius is very dark. Well, radius does not have a set value, or it does, but it's not referencing X particles at this point. This is just a value, maybe it's set to, I could probably figure out exactly what it's set to, but I'm not going to at the moment. But if we throw in a math node here, uh, set it to, multiply and let's solo this let's just you know multiply this by two multiply it by 10 okay we're still not to white let's multiply it by 50. okay we definitely have some white let's compare that to our color okay so that's a little too bright um so who knows 40 20 it's somewhere in between there. Oh, it's probably 33.3333 uh, repeating. Let's just compare that. Ah, pretty close. Anyway, uh, so that's basically saying this radius is defaulting to zero being black and close to 100 being pure white. So since our particles are much smaller than that, we have to remap it using this math multiply node to get those values that we want compared to to get it to match what our color is outputting it's not exactly right but it's pretty close 
the same you'll notice whenever you mess with the um, age. In this case, all the particles are the same age, but again, that is a that value is a very large. Um, so most of your uh, particles, you're either going to need to multiply uh, by uh, like 0 0.01 or something to get it into the right range, or you might even have to multiply it by like we did with the radius to 20 or something like that. Now the index is another one. You could really kind of fine tune this. You see everything is just completely blown out. Well, why is that? Well, we have 50,000 particles in here. And so the range from zero to one is well past one. So we're going to go to math, multiply. We're gonna start viewing this, you know, at 0.5, that's not doing it. I believe that I did like 0 0.0001 or five the other day. Nope. Uh, 0 0.00005. There we go. Now we're starting to kind of see that. Uh, let's go 0 0.00002. Okay, so now you're starting to kind of see that being refined down so you can actually see the index. So the index is 0 through 50,000 in this case. Um, then you could throw this into a color ramp and you might be able to we probably won't get it all the way but if we set this to step and preview it you can see here we are selecting very few particles so if you really got this math multiply nailed in exactly if i knew the exact index it was um, or the exact math to put it to you could almost go particle by particle with this index and color them as you wanted in this case, 50,000 is a very large number, and I don't think I can get that, that close enough to highlight a single particle, at least not accurately. So let's go back to our color. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to add in um, a color ramp. Okay, you'll notice that it changed here. This is important and you'll you'll notice if, uh, this a few times. We click on color, we have, um, or sorry, we'll do it this way. Um, if you click uh, in this circle right here on the color ramp or any of these, it's a it sets it to bypass. So this is just a direct feed of the particle info for color. But then if we apply this color ramp, you now see it got maybe a little bit more contrasty or uh, kind of just crushed the values on the top and the bottom. The reason for that is the um, color ramp is by default set to smooth, which if you're used to After Effects or well, Cinema 4D is smooth, but in After Effects it would be like an easy ease. Um, so the colors are actually gradually coming up from black at a slower point and then uh, so it, it's not a linear. So to get that linear, you would just change this, both of these to linear. And now you can see if we bypass this or we don't, it now looks the exact same. Not a big deal for these because uh, you'll notice none of the particles share two different colors. There's no gradients inside of a single particle. Each particle is whichever value it is closest to, it is assigned that fully. Okay, let's, now we're gonna change the color. So under the color ramp, uh, our darkest values, so our, uh, the ones that are basically not visible, um, are going to be, let's do something like this. Okay, and our brightest values for now, let's just make it like a blue. We're gonna make this a very blue looking, I, I don't know what project, there we go. Okay, so for this one, oh, maybe some green. Again, this is not pre-thought out, so if it looks terrible, I'm very sorry. Mm. 
Maybe we switch these two. Let's go a bit brighter. Maybe not. That's an ugly color. Okay, we're just gonna leave it like that. I don't want to bore you guys with me trying to make something look good when it's not necessarily my strong suit. So um, now we have something that is very colorful. And um, I just wanna show you the amount of control you can get in here though. Now that we have this color data, we can really refine this. So let's hide on use sockets and add in another color ramp. Type this in. And now I just want maybe some of these like uh, mid-tone particles here uh, to be basically to be like emissive lights. And we're gonna do this all in the same material. So under this color ramp, we're gonna solo it. We're gonna change it to this to step and we'll change this one to step and now we're going to kind of just block out an area so right now again it's just off the black to white mapping we're going to just fill in some of these middle ones so i don't want those larger particles Let's just grab some of these and i don't want all of them those i don't want to lose that color that we have in there but we just want some of these to be emissive so now we've got a procedural mask it will follow um, this area so anything that is around that size in radius is highlighted here so to combine those we're going to add in a mix shader we're going to pipe in our principal BSDF and we are going to create a new emission right down here I pipe that into shader 2 okay so based off, off of this color ramp anything that is black is going to be fed shader 1 which is this one and anything that is white is going to be fed our emission so we're going to pipe that into the factor and then replace that into the surface output so now we have these little emissive dots let's change the color on that do something close and we also can maybe bump the strength up a bit okay that may or may not be right you know if we threw in a if we throw in a camera uh, I don't recommend doing this uh, in any of your third-party render engines, but if you're set on doing it, um, at least don't let it render out like this. Um, really control that threshold so not everything is blooming. Really dial it in so it's just uh, subtle. Just be subtle with these things. The glare, I really have not found any settings with glare that I that I like. Um, it just it changes the brightness of this scene too much. Like all these middle particles, everything's getting boosted with light and getting these glares, but at the same time, it darkens everything. I am just not a huge fan of that. So I don't use these. I um, typically just do this all in post, which is fun because sometimes you can make some stuff that looks bad look much better, at least acceptable in, in post. Maybe I'll talk about experimenting in After Effects and you know trying to make something bad look better. Okay, let's see, let's um, 
You know, these are just like solid lights right now. Let's give it a little more, uh, a better, a little bit better of a look. Let's um, add in a uh, glass BSDF maybe. Sure. Yeah, and then a layer weight. Lay our weight down. We're gonna pipe in a pipe that layer weight into a color ramp. I'm gonna use the facing. Let's see what that looks like. And I'll just control this in our um, in our color ramp instead. So if we go here. Um, really kind of just want something along the, yeah, something along those lines. Um, and we're going to change this color. This one is going to be like a darker kind of blue. And this one, we will just select what we currently have set as the emission. Okay. So now we're just going to, oh, invert those. There we go. We're going to pipe that into our emission. Now it has a little bit more of a shape to it, which I like. It feels like it is kind of glowing from the center rather than just this full on light. Uh, and then let's just do another mix shader. Pipe these in. This is just a glass BSDF mixed with the um, emission. See if we pull all the way to the left, it's giving us just fully emission. We go all the way to the right, it's giving us just the glass. I like to kind of go in between. And mind, this is probably something that's maybe too subtle to pick up on these. Um, but it just gives it, you can catch little reflections and stuff off of it. You know, you could probably even do this with a um, glossy as well. Um, maybe that works better. Who knows? Oh yeah, that's probably a little bit better. Okay. Nix the glass piece. Yeah. In this case, um, you could even pipe in your color if you were worried about losing that, but now you've got this little like uh, highlight reflection on here as well as having it actually emitting light. Oh, that does not look good. Sure, here's a completely impossible object. It's fine, we'll plug this in and see what we look like. Okay, that's, I'm fine with that for now. We're gonna be far enough away again. <laughs> These things don't matter. I'm just trying to show you a, the different things that you can do. Um, so something else in the project that I had posted the other day was that everything had this, um, you know, just constantly had this flicker. Well, one, you're gonna get a bit of flicker whenever you just um, play this, because what's happening is that, well, let's show it this way. We're gonna turn off our XP scale and um, probably need to set the emitter to be, I think it was too large when we looked at it last time. So let's just set this down to, uh, 1.5 maybe. Okay. Now when we play this, oh, that is way too dense. Okay. Let's just set this to 10,000. There we go. Okay. So you can see the particles moving around and how, and how they're, they're moving and they're following along the surface. Well, all that's happening and then being overridden by the XP scale. So the XP scale is not actually shifting. It's basically staying in place. I don't believe you can animate the XP scale. I tried, I didn't get it to work. There might be a way 
for now I'll pretend like there's not. Um, but if I'm wrong, please let me know. So these are moving around and then the XP scale is basically overriding those. So as they move through certain areas here in the scale, once I enable this, you see here, if you try to follow these particles, you see that they're actually scaling up and down based off of their position. This is all happening really fast and we probably wanna slow that down. So under XP emitter, let's go to object under retiming, let's maybe set that to 50%. Okay, so here we're probably gonna get a little bit of, we're definitely getting a lot of flicker in this anyway. Um, and that is something with this XP follow surface that I am, you know, not 100% sure about. You know, maybe if they, let's try to emit them with just a tiny bit of speed. No, still flickering. N not gonna worry about troubleshooting that for right now. If you have a fix for that, again, let me know in the comments, please. Okay, XP emitter, we have the XP scale. We've slowed it down so that everything isn't just flying by. So let me set this up to 100. 80 frames, give us three seconds of animation at 30 frames a second. And then, oh, we need to bump back up our particle count. So we'll do that to 50,000. Okay, we'll select off of this and let's kind of center this up. I'm going to quickly just cache this. So other objects, XP cache, Okay, now that's cached, we should be able to just drag through and see kind of what it looks like. It looks like we're losing a full few particles. Maybe that was just me dragging through. No, we're definitely losing a few particles. Kind of floating off here. I think that is because that is because of the distance and the XP follow surface. So we are going to cache that again and I'll be back. Okay, we're back. Let's see how this does this time. And yeah, it looks like we fixed that problem. So we'll zoom in again really quickly and you can just see what these particles are doing. They're moving around and they are scaling based off of the color and shape of the noise that is again overriding all of these values okay so go let's add in um, one last thing that I had on my render and that is I had an intentional like light flicker uh across the whole thing and i did this by probably a really strange way we are going to grab a noise texture if we solo that right now um, you notice you're gonna hardly see anything but if you zoom in, you see all these have the exact same UV information and they all have this texture really, really tiny on them. So what I'm going to do is add, grab the random from the particle info. So if you click on random and view that, it makes everything this random black and white color. Perfect. Uh, now we're going to pipe that into the vector of the noise texture and that's completely fine <laughs> um now the only reason i'm doing this is because i have i can increase the scale of this or um, decrease the scale it's not really gonna affect it much but what we do want to do is change the distortion So as you change this distortion, 
I think I had it from like 100 to uh, maybe 90 or something like that. Um, as the distortion changes, it's almost like changing the seed of this random value. Um, this is probably never going to be handy for you, other than if you're following along with this. But pipe factor into this color ramp. We're going to hit solo on this color. Let's zoom back out so we can see what we're working with. And let's really um, clamp these values down. Again, we'll set this to step. Set this one to step. And let's just choose a very, very small amount of particles to do this to. Okay, so that's, that's getting there. Don't know why I'm dragging that one. Okay, that's still too many. Still too many. Maybe drag this back a little bit. Maybe even more. Try it up here. Sorry, a lot of this is just me playing around. Okay, this is looks like we're gonna be able to fine tune it. That's maybe too few. Okay, sure, perfect. That's the perfect amount. Um, with this, we're going to create another, basically this whole section, this emission glossy BSDF with emission, we're gonna take select all those and do a command drag or control drag if you're on a PC. I'm on a PC but I have a Mac keyboard and we're going to change these colors over here to let's make them stand out a little bit. Let's go with like a uh, let's go a little more orange and warm a little more saturation uh, actually that's our highlight we'll pull this one to more of a RNG tone. Okay, and if we preview that, there we go, we have this, and let's make this kind of burn pretty hot when it does come out. Perfect. Okay, so taking our really narrow bit of pieces, and if we come to this noise texture and go to the distortion, and I click down on this, you'll see that these values are changing. It's almost like a random seed. Okay, so just on our final mix shader here, we're going to take our new emission one, that is this orange bright, and we're gonna create another duplicate this mix shader here this is going to get piped into the shader one our bright emission orange is getting piped into shader two and then it is being mixed together using that um, really fine-tuned black and white one okay so then we just have these like you know bright kind of cosmic highlights that does it whatever now you can get this to animate so you're not just picking those small points because obviously if we just wanted those small points we could have just narrowed down the color range we could have done an even crunch down on the index i guess the index might have worked to pipe into this mm, no maybe not anyway um no it wouldn't have so from the random into the noise texture. Now we're gonna go, I'm gonna hit Shift F and go back to our first frame. On the distortion in our attributes tab, I'm going to select a keyframe. I'm gonna go all the way to the end, hit Shift G, and I'm gonna change that to, let's go 70, set a keyframe with that Let's change both of those to linear just in case you can see a little easing out. It's not really going to matter, but 
we go, and that should flicker for a little added bonus. You could add in some depth of field if you wanted. Um, come over to the Cycles 4D camera tag under settings. Just add just a tiny bit of size to this, click back on the camera, go to object on the focus distance, click the uh, mouse cursor button here, and then you can select the area that you would like it to be focused. And that's kind of focused. Let's maybe bump that up a little bit. Oh, that's a bit much. 0 0.015. This is very sensitive. Uh, I wish it was maybe a, not as sensitive it seems like this scene scale is, yeah, just a, just a little sensitive. Okay, so I will, let's see what the bloom looks like really quick. Probably bump that down just a tiny bit. Nope, we're gonna leave it off. Okay, let's put some settings to this. Let's view it at 100%. Okay, it's something. It's not a fantastic work of art, but hopefully you guys learned some concepts. Uh, Cycles 4D, I'm gonna go to the Cycles 4D uh, render tab, and I'm gonna set my device to CUDA for my, so it uses the GPUs. Um, this can probably be fine at, it's using 16 there, let's set it to 12 and see what it looks like. That cleans up. Okay, I think that's that's probably fine. Um, I'm not going to change too many settings on here. You know, the min minimum maximum uh, on all this isn't really going to change a whole lot. You know, you could turn off transparent shadows, refractive caustics, reflective caustics, might help it um, speed up some in, just since it doesn't have to calculate those, since we do, well, we don't have glass in here, so it's probably not gonna be doing the um, caustics. Uh, and, you know, I would just kind of limit this stuff. I'm gonna go ahead and turn on a transparent background. Uh, all this is fine. I don't like using the denoising in here, uh, but if you don't have another option, then uh, experiment with this for sure. And, oh, under saving, make sure, very important, make sure this is 32-bit so that you, you render out exactly what you see here. I'm gonna enable the alpha channel, and I like with Cycles 4D, setting this to straight alpha, and then in your compositing software, make sure you assign that. Um, well, I guess I'll just do that really quickly after this finishes rendering. Okay, I'll be back when the render is finished. Okay guys, so here's the rendered version. Uh, after posting it last night, I really not happy with the background, but sometimes that just happens. Uh, you know, if I wanted to spend more time on it, maybe I would have tweaked it into something that I liked, but uh, probably anything would have been better than what I posted up. You know, that's somewhat better. Or maybe just on black again. Just trying to make it slightly different from, than the one I posted the day before, so. Anyway, here is the actual animation. You'll notice that I added a move to the camera. It's parented to a null in the center of the scene and just rotating around. I think with everything moving, you're kind of losing out on the flashing of the little orange dots and stuff. But if this was something we were getting paid to do, we would fix those things. For now, it's fine. I uh, hope you guys learned something in this video. Let me know what else you guys would be interested in. I know I'm going to look at some other X particles, Cycles 4D stuff, probably rendering splines with Cycles 4D and some other things in X particles. So let me know what you're interested in and I'll see you guys later.